I built an AI agent bot that watches my Gmail account that never lets me double book with clients ever again. And I wanna show you guys how I put it together. Some of the cool new features that I'm implementing to this new workflow from my prior videos and how you guys can use it today, build this thing on your own and start using this to watch your Gmail or your Outlook or whatever email you're using so that you never double book with clients ever again. As a quick recap from the prior videos that I had done, the first workflow up here that we're seeing this is checking for if I ever send a client an email, it takes the, sorry, the email is going to contain something like, hey, can you meet on 1015 uh, from 1 to 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, okay? The N8N agent watches and catches that email if I ever send one like that. And what it does is it creates a placeholder event on my Gmail calendar for that time that I had sent for that either one recipient or two recipients, however many recipients creates that block on my calendar so that when I go to schedule another meeting later, I don't accidentally send another person that same time slot available. And if they ever both come back and they both confirm, then we've, ha we've got that double booking situation. So this N8N agent wipes that away, manages it completely for me. As soon as I send that first email, the N8N agent handles the scheduling from there on out. Let's get into it. So if I come in here and I'm going to compose an email to Zigtech client one, Zigtech client two, say meeting time request, Dan and Zach, can you meet 10, 15, 20, 25, uh, 1 p.m. to 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, okay? So I'll send that, that email out. So we'll come over to client one. Okay, so client one got the email. Client two also got the email. And if we go back to the agent here, you, get, you can see that there's nothing scheduled on my calendar, okay? But if I come back here and I run this first workflow, which will obviously be running all the time, it's gonna catch these emails as soon as I send them. It's going to execute, execute, execute. It's going to create that. So if we go back to the client, or sorry, the agent email, you can see it creates this placeholder with the recipients on the particular email from one to 2 p.m. Creates a placeholder, okay? So now, the agent is gonna be watching for uh, a response from that particular client. Another thing to note, it also is going to send that data for that first workflow up here that we executed over into my, my data tables. So you can see here, recipients are these two people, the proposed meeting date, this was my proposed meeting time, the time zone, the message of the body has followed up, created at, updated, all information about that one email is now being stored in this data tables that I can reference later very easily, okay? So now we want to respond as the client. So we're going to say, we're actually gonna say, no, that time doesn't work for me. I am free, and we'll just do like an hour later, 10, 15, 20, 25, we'll do a couple hours later, 3 p.m., 3, p.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, or I can meet the next day, 10, 16, 20, 25, 1 p.m. to 2 p.m. EST, okay? I'll go ahead and send that, okay? So as the client, as me, or sorry, not as the client, as the agent, as me, I got the response. No, that time doesn't work for me. I am free 10, 15, 3 to 4, or 10, 16, 1 to 2, okay? So now if I execute this flow, and I'm gonna go all the way up until this switch, the switch node, let me zoom in here so you guys can see, okay? So we got the received email. We went and checked to confirm that, that that meeting invite, or sorry, that meeting request was actually inside of our data table here because we only want this workflow to execute when we have something in here that is related to that first email, okay? Then our basic LLM chain is going to pass that message and interpret the response from the client, okay? So now in this switch node, you'll see three different options, the zero, one, two, or three. The zero is if, if we open up this node, oh shit, I executed it, not what I meant to do. We'll open it up, it's okay. So what we're gonna do is the basic LLM chain is going to pass three different responses, three options. We'll go check those out real quick. In my definition or my prompt to the chat, the chat bot, I said, I only want you to give me three different options. They either confirmed, they declined, or they declined and proposed a new time. Okay, so those are the three outputs that my, uh, my basic LLM chain is going to produce. And in this case, 
the, the user, or sorry, the client declined and they proposed the time. So my uh, result of this basic LLM, LLM chain is declined and proposed new time. So now I know what to do with it. Well, in that case, we want to pass. So now if we go open up this switch again, I have three different rules. I have one rule, declined, proposed time, confirmed or declined altogether, okay? So in this case, they declined and pros proposed a new time. So we want this branch to execute, okay? So now what it's going to do is it's going to pass that uh, message back into a, a basic LLM chain and interpret those times that the client had responded back with, with their availability, okay? So it's gonna pass that in there. Then we're going to pass it into this get, suggest, get recipient suggested time function which is basically a bunch of code that takes the text format of this basic LLM chain and reformats it into something that's usable, something that I can use later on down in the, the workflow line, okay? So the output of this is actually two objects, or two windows rather, two windows of, of availability. You can see the start and the end time, the time zone, the duration of their availability, um, and the source text, what was the actual text that was sent. So both available times are now, I'm able to check those against my calendar, my availability and see if anything matches. So the next node is simply just going to check my uh, availability in my calendar. It's going to see if I'm available. So it's going to either evaluate to true or false based on both of those times that the client has responded with. Then we only wanna limit it to one of those choices. So we don't want the invite to be sent for uh, both available times. We only want it to send one calendar invite for one of the times that they suggested that matches my availability, okay? So this limit choices simply just limits, um, limits the options. So you can see both of those available times from my calendar are true, meaning I'm available for both the times that they suggested. We only want to schedule one of those times. Okay, so that's what this limit choices does. So to limit that choice to one, it'll schedule the meeting. So once the schedule meeting gets executed, you can see here, we are now confirmed meeting from three to 4 p.m. because they had responded 10.15 from three to 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So now we've got a confirmed meeting on, on my calendar. And if we go over to the client's calendar, we can also see that same calendar invite, confirmed meeting, three to 4 p.m. We can go over to the other recipient, recipient two, confirmed meeting, three to 4 p.m. Okay, so now it checked the available times that they had sent over, checked my availability on my Google Calendar, and if something matched, it basically recreated that calendar event, sent it to me, sent it to the two recipients, and then the final step is it's going to delete the placeholder meeting from the original request that I had sent. So if we go back now to my Gmail, you can see there was a placeholder here from 1 to 2 p.m. from when I had sent that originally. It, it now went in and deleted that placeholder meeting. So now the only thing on here is that confirmed meeting. And then it's going to update our data table. So now, so now if we refresh this, we can see from the response from client confirmed meeting has been scheduled. So now all three of us, me and the two recipients have this meeting calendar or this meeting event rather on our calendars. Okay, so now I wanna just discuss these other two options. So on the switch statement, we went up to this branch because it evaluated to zero or they declined and proposed a new time. If they confirmed it, it would simply just forward the existing placeholder meeting on my calendar to the recipients. If they declined it, it would decline that placeholder meeting. Now, something else I'm gonna put in here, I just, just thought of this, is I'm going to put a, uh, a follow-up message with them and say, hey, uh, so, so they'll respond and they'll say, no, that time doesn't work for me. Normally, people wouldn't do that. They would respond with something that works for them or ask a question like, uh, what other times do you have available? Something along those lines. But if they just send something that says, no, I can't make that time work, I wanna follow up with them or I want the agent to follow up with them and say, okay, um, let's see. We have two options here, actually, now that I think about this. We can do two things. We can do one email that says, 
something like, no worries, what is your available time? We'll get something scheduled and they can send back their availability and then we can handle it here. Or we can send them a list of other available times that we have in our calendar. And then if it does send that, then it would create placeholders for every single one of those times that I had sent out to them, just in case in the future, I email another client and I don't want to send them my availability for available times that I had sent to client A. So this is very nuanced and very, it's kind of tricky because I'm trying to catch as many possible situations that I could get from a response from a, a, from a client. Um, so it's very tricky, it's very nuanced, but uh, we're on the right track here. We're handling many of the, like the three main ones really, yes, no or no, but these times work for me. So that's that's what's captured currently in here. So the next the next part of this is going to be if they decline and all they do is decline, then send them some available times that I have or ask them for their available times. And then when they respond to that one, check my calendar again with the times that they had sent, get that thing scheduled and, and then we'll be on our way. Um, so that's where we're at. So lots of new, cool new things. Like I said, last if, last week, if you didn't look at that video about the data tables, go check that out because it's extremely, extremely important and very, very valuable. Um, and then this new switch statement that I learned um, is very, very helpful too when kind of handling multiple situations that can occur. Um, so in the next one, we'll talk about that kind of that fourth branch or this third branch here, where if they decline, will go into following up with them with other available times or asking them for their available times. So um, make sure you smash that subscribe button, like this video, it helps me out a, a, a ton. Um, but I'll catch you in the next one. See you guys.